ready. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to the 1% podcast. I've been a little bit quiet, but we are back with a beautiful returning guest. Um, so I won't do the intros and we won't go into the live stories again, but I'm just very happy to have Sophia back on the podcast. How you doing, my love? I'm doing great and I'm like I don't know whether to introduce myself or introduce the if you're listening guys I have a lovely ironing board behind me <laughs> that's in the camera view so yeah I don't know that's my grand entrance <laughs> perfect entrance no I let's because obviously it's a nice catch up for us this conversation so I actually do just want it to be a super chilled catch up so the last time that we kind of spoke just through text and stuff like that you were kind of transitioning you kind of you got a new job you you think you were like moving house you got a new job and things like that um like where are we like what's what's since personal training and then you transitioned into doing some real estate but you're still PTing and now you're in a different job right because I used to see you at the marina all the time running and training because your job was close there and now you're not (laughs) Yeah, so life has just been obviously very fruitful, you could say. And I just feel like um, sometimes I used to hang on to jobs for too long um, and not change until the time was right, essentially. Um, But now I feel like I'm a good listener of myself. I've been handed opportunities and I feel like I've grabbed the opportunities by the the balls <laughs> you want to say um and I've just changed when I've needed to change so when I come back to personal training I was personal training for what seven and a half years hmm. and that was including online coaching being a duty manager of a gym um to then when I got onto the whole online coaching sort of thing I kind of felt like it, do I want to expand this do I want to grow this and the things that I had to do to expand grow I wasn't willing to do it essentially it didn't feel like it was the right vehicle I was in at that time Hmm. um and then I started personal training actually the director of a real estate company here in Dubai and she was a lovely lovely client and she kept saying to me like you know what you work so hard and I feel like your return isn't high enough she'd said to me and off the back end of that, I remember I actually went to the Dubai Opera House to watch Stephen Bartlett's talk. Um, and when he did his talk, he had a panel discussion with one of the the owners of Allsop and Allsop, which is a huge real estate company here in Dubai. And he talked about, you know, working within a company, but still being an entrepreneur with a high return and a high reward. And I could just see myself in this guy when he was talking. Um, so the next day for my PT session, I said to the director, I said, listen, when are you hiring? I am, I was like, I want to come in. And she was like, you sure? She said, I don't want to, I don't want to push you. And then anyway, what happened was Basically, I went into the company, we did our training for two weeks. And after three days after training, I had managed to sell two villas within three days and I made history within the company. Um, And then randomly, long story short, uh, I got introduced to this investment company, um, which is based in the Burj Khalifa called AX Investments. Um. And I took the leap. I got the opportunity to start working there. And next thing I know, I'm working from the 146th floor. (laughs) Very Uh different from personal training. And yeah, it's it's been a great transition. And it's something that I'll, like, I pride myself in making the decision of changing the whole industry I was in. Because I feel like I was not up leveling at that stage. And I wouldn't be where I'd be today if I didn't invite that change in you know yeah that's crazy I think also for me like seeing you transition as like a friend I just think it's because we've had conversations about life and shit like that but just seeing you go through these changes like you can see it in yourself that you fucking love it like you really do like you can see it in yourself that you love it and even like even the fact that we haven't spoken a bit of time like you you just seem very connected in what you're doing now 
Do you know what I mean? And it kind of shows like the way that you speak now and like your eyes light up as about the opportunities and things like that. It's just really, it is lovely to see, even for me, because it's, I'm I'm generally really fucking proud of you. Because when it's like, it's cool, right? Like you work in the Burj and stuff like that. It's a, it's a baller kind of thing. It's cool. Um, so how did it, what, what is it that you're doing now and sort of thing? Like what, what's, because obviously it went from real estate and then it kind of went into, I don't know anything about what you're doing. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, funny, like real estate actually ties into exactly what I'm doing. So like I'm in investment. So basically in simple terms, what I do is I help people make more money upon their savings and their earnings essentially. Okay. And to kind of change the mentality around what investments are and what you can do with an investment to enhance your lifestyle, to be able to become financially free. And what's really exciting for me now is that the fact that before I used to do body transformations and it was because I was 26 kilos heavier than what I am today. So I felt like I really resonated with it, with it now. And the whole now what I'm doing is like financial transformations where it's like getting yeah. people to a stage where they're feeling financially free. So it's kind of very similar and connected in a weird way because I feel like I never had financial freedom and that's something that I want to help people do more of as well because I think when you feel like financially free and free of dieting and fat loss and all this kind of thing as well, like it's just you, I don't know, I just, it, I think my pursue through any of my career is to make people feel that little bit better and feel like they have freedom of choice mm. freedom of headspace and freedom of opportunity to do the things that they want to do and whether it's in finance whether it's in body transformations I think it's just it it's I think it's my kind of coaching background kind of comes yeah. full circle with this. so anyway to dial back into exactly what I do <laughs> is um basically as I said anyone who's sitting on their savings they want to make it grow and they want to make it work and make their money their employee essentially that's what my company does and we do have a product which is asset backed which means that like if you make an investment you have a tangible object to back your investment amount as a layer of security cool. and that is actually real estate Okay. So it is still still within the real estate industry. So it's it's still exciting because I don't know, I'm I'm quite a homely person with real estate. I always felt like I want my own home and you know, it's just I don't know, I always find kind of purpose and emotional attachment to whatever job I'm doing anyway because then it actually makes me feel a bit more fulfilled in what I'm doing. It's not just a monetary perspective. I'm just here for the money. I'm here for the quick ticket because I think that really runs really dry and I've seen people in so many different industries where they make a level of money but they feel empty inside and they don't really feel like they can truly enjoy their funds. Yeah, 100%. And like obviously it's like advice and things like that like say for example like I came in I don't know with like say for something I don't know what's what's low like 50, I don't know what the low like 50,000 dirhams I don't know people would have obviously more than that a lot more than that but if I came with 50,000 dirhams where would you kind of like be like hey like is property an option is it because obviously like is it stocks is it shares and is it all this sort of stuff like where would someone with like I don't know, say for example, let's go low, let's go low and high. If you had like a low, a low kind of savings of, I don't know, 50,000 dirhams, which is what, 10,000 euros, 10,000 pounds, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we do ent entry points from anything from like 10,000 US dollars all the way up to a million. Um, You're looking at like a million dirhams, which would be what, 500k, uh, 500k. Yeah, pounds or something um, and yeah. to get more into the the property ladder sort of thing because you're not taking a share of a company it's it's essentially an asset backed by you individually okay um how, how we generate profits so for people who are to be honest now from coming from the personal training side of things and coaching side of things I felt like I never had the financial education that we all deserve and to be able to up level, to be able to upskill our careers and to be able to fund our education as well, to give back to ourselves, to up level yeah. as a coach. 
I think we all needed this information. We all needed this education. Oh. And it's kind of, it's difficult to know where to start. So I often, I back in 2017, I thought, right, let me get into crypto. Let me study crypto. Let me understand what's going on. Let me understand what trading is. But I lost so much time and effort into just trying to figure things out where yeah. I actually think now, even because I'm in this industry now, I'm like, leave it to the professionals. If they're going to take a cut of the money or like whatever investment you're going to have, if you're still getting a high enough return and the calculated risk is okay, go for it and focus on the things that you're really good at. Because yeah. otherwise there's there's people in this industry and they're, they come from banking. They come from like, they've done years and years of research analysts that are doing this and they do it as their full-time profession. I don't think, how are you going to outsmart this? analyst like so it can be a it can be a rabbit hole to fall down in into and then you get discouraged and then you don't put any skin in the game and this is yeah. this is what I did when I was in, in 2017 I did put a bit of skin in the game I lost skin in the game <laughs> and then yeah. I thought I could build businesses off the back end of this which was jewelry salads which end up failing. I uh, these were two projects I ended up failing in because I thought, oh no, I won't go into trade. No, I won't go into crypto. I'll, I'll make my own business. So you always think your own way is the best way, but you might you'll learn through the pro uh, the journey, um, and you'll learn what not to do. And I've learned from my own experience now that just these types of industries leave it to the professionals and allow them to make more money for you essentially and it doesn't matter if they're taking a cut of it or whatever it is that's money that you were never going to have anyway if you're willing to park your money yeah exactly but it's true I guess it's in any field isn't it it's like it's not so much like like you say it's knowledge but also it's experience like they've seen so many clients they've dealt with so many clients they know kind of you can't predict like well, I guess you can actually, you can, people that are good, they can predict kind of fluctuations and they can, a lot of things now, they know what's a safe and safer investment sort of thing. They kind of know all this sort of stuff from experience. So, and it's the same, like we would do the same, like don't waste your time trying to figure out your own training fucking program. Just let me do it. It'll be good. Trust me sort of thing. Um, so no, this it's, it's really interesting because obviously I think uh, do you know what I went down a rabbit hole went down that deep hole of like YouTube and there was all this I think now we're starting to see this we're starting to see this in a world now of the educational system how it's shit like more so like the basic educational yeah. system through schooling university now people are like why should I go to university unless I need to be a doctor or a lawyer sort of thing otherwise it's like why don't I just study YouTube and learn all these things learn a skill learn a craft and build a business and things like that but obviously this is having governments are kind of picking up onto this. And now we see this more cancel culture and things like that in, in different parts of the world, like North America, Europe, Australia, things like that. You get punished for trying to do your own thing. But obviously here, Dubai, Middle East, it's almost welcomed that kind of style of things. So I, go on. I, I think it's really important, though, as you mentioned there, like watching YouTube and everything else, it's really important where we pick our sources of information as well, though, because uh, we can be hell like, I don't know, start holding hands with someone on YouTube that's basically going to bring us down the wrong journey or the wrong path as well. So I do think there needs to be an element of structure to where you're getting your information sources from as well, which is really important. And also, I went to the Future Innovation Summit, which is like basically the future of tech and everything else in Dubai and education. And there was a guy that was there and he was in his late 70s and he's actually building a campus here in the UAE where the campus, the students do, do not have to go to university every single day. It's like a hybrid um, education system that they're having now because they know that there's uh, there's ways of learning and not everyone's fits in the same box so he they're building an education system and a structure with this university to allow people to come and go and and learn as their own style of learning because I think 
with the traditional education system that we've had before I think lots of people don't fit in that one box where they need to sit in the classroom and like science shows that you know most people's con or con concentration only lasts 20 minutes so they need to get up they need to move around they need to change subject they, and yeah. there's, so there's so many different ways to navigate through this and to be able to be more efficient when it comes to education as well yeah and it's also like you say like no one like no one taught us how to do deal with our money at school like they don't teach you anything they don't do you're like all right, how to work out your finances or how much should you be saving versus how much you spend and how much your tax is going to be. No, no one teaches you this stuff. So it's only till you're like, I don't know, till you have a job, you get to like, maybe if you're earlier, you start having better concept of money. But I didn't have a clue with money until I was like mid twenties. And even now I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm a bit better with it because I'm more self-aware and stuff like that. But it's like, fuck, like tell me this 10 years ago, that would have been really helpful. <laughs> like, but it's just we don't get taught any of this stuff like real life sort of things now um which is so a very damaging thing in society for sure uh, there's a definitely a reason for for sure i think you know they need to have people at the bottom of the chain we can't all be thrivers because who's gonna who's gonna do the jobs that are the low ball and jobs the low paid jobs essentially as well like who are so there is, I think there's a background like strategy in place um, that I think it's nearly a race to the bottom. And I think people are becoming a bit more clever um, as technology is advancing, as social media is expanding their knowledge and the expanding the access to people who are knowledgeable within these systems as well. I yeah. think this is, a, this is something that I don't think people... Um, managed to predict and I think uh now I think people are become more intelligent than yeah. ever yeah as, um I don't know <laughs> who knows if we talk about the topic it, we might get cancelled for this but there's a good there was a three-part YouTube series that got released um by a guy in Dubai and it was pretty much talking about the educational system how it is purely about producing robots it's based on a uh it's based on like a no you're talking about Gadzi. Yeah, yeah. And it was based on like all oh, there's a really interesting. I haven't watched the last one yet, but like it just opens your eyes up to things like that. How we are designed to work for the people that built these systems. And we're designed to work for, but now, like you say, we're in a world now where we can do podcasts and we can reach someone from the other side of the world. And you're like, oh, so I don't have to do this. And then everyone's like light bulbs now are ticking. Being like, well, I yeah. don't to listen to the system and I don't we're all... go. On. We're all no, we're just all becoming way more aware than ever, I think. And if anything, the pandemic I think has really shook people to really look at the fine details as well. Yeah. hundred percent. The pandemic taught us like <sighs> the diversity, like why are they not doing anything? Why are they open? does this make sense? And everyone's going, nah, <laughs> like this is definitely a dictatorship where we are right now sort of thing. And then you see countries strive and you see businesses strive and you're like, why is people homeless here? And why is this place going to shit compared to here? And you're like, mm, it says a lot. Success leaves clues sort of thing. Yeah. So. I think at the end of the day, it's everything's run off money and greed more or less. Um, oh, fuck yeah. And, yeah. And, and this, it, the more money the like the more greed and then the more power that's in people's hands as well with with the effects of money as well so uh even being in the financial industry you start to look at the world at a di very different view i feel like um i don't, never i don't want to sound like i'm putting anyone down in the personal training industry but i feel like i was so naive to what actually goes on um in the financial systems and everything else well because you're not exposed to it you just wouldn't be exposed to it so now it's like the exposure it's like oh is this actually the reality of how life is and how the world is and it can kind of uh jade kind of your view or vision of like being positive with the world yeah um, so you kind of in in a funny way, I would definitely say being in the fitness industry, you can your positivity and your mental health, I would say, um, 
doesn't take as much of a bashing as it would do in the financial and corporate industry for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's the thing with anything though, isn't it? When you kind of, I guess when you're very focused on this area of your life, it's very easy to kind of put blinkers on and blur other areas out. I think that's more, more of a reason why everyone needs to be super open-minded to like, I don't know, like this year has been a lot of like learning for me, like a lot of like amazing learning, absolutely amazing learning, but it kind of just a lot of like light bulbs and you're like, fuck, like for me, it's like, it's just that pure epiphany movement that no one's going to fucking save you. Nothing's getting, everything's kind of against you as well. Like the systems are against you. Everything's kind of against you. Um, And it's just, it's no one's fault. It's just how it works. That is, it's just the systems, it's life and things like that. So you kind of have to, to be kind of that outlier and go against the grain. You do have to have a very open mind and you do have to approach each day very differently. Like, yeah, it's just. um, I I think there's two factors to play here on that, what you're saying about, you know, nobody's going to save you. But I think as a child, right, you grow up with Disney movies when there's like the night in shining armor comes to come and rescue you. And you're watching all these uh, movies as a child even. And that's when you're conditioned, your, your thoughts, your behaviors. And you have this expectation that when you grow up and be an adult, can't wait to be an adult. Someone's going to come and save me. And it's going to be this magical story where you're, invite with the reality when that actually doesn't happen and I think as an adult you're like hang on a second this isn't what I expected (laughs) and it's like okay well we were being conditioned to be like that even from such a young age and sure you're nurtured by your parents the minute you're born essentially if you were born in a nurturing family now I know every other family can be different Mm. um but I think uh yeah as human beings were conditioned that way and also they do say that 80 percent of your thoughts right that we have are on a feedback loop of negativity 80 percent of them and we've 60,000 thoughts per day so your chances of 20 percent is you actually going against the grain and trying to be positive and pulling yourself out of the deep like out of the deep despair of of life you could say but um without getting too heavy but it's that's the reality of it if you actually look at the science yeah it proves so it is I do think life life is suffering and I do identify it as a gift though to be able to suffer and to learn through those difficult times because you don't learn through easy times you really don't and I think unfortunately when you do see the world going through some really difficult times i think something incredible is just about to happen yeah no i love that because it's definitely yeah i I love that mindset again this is why i love talking to you as well because every time i speak to you you say something and it hits home (laughs) so it's great (laughs) um but it's true it is true like i think that's why like again like we've all kind of I definitely think this is why sometimes sport and stuff like that is such a great thing at a young age growing up and same as fitness because it teaches you how to handle life in a sense and handle how to business and things like that you show up when it sucks you do the work when it sucks when you don't feel like it you show up and that's all it is like you say when it's those negative thoughts it's like yeah I've got these negative thoughts but you just have to be like right put it just put it in the 20% <laughs> it's going to go back into the 80 but if you can just keep showing up when it sucks like that's where the results will be that's where like you say if you feel like you're in a dark place now I'm like sometimes be grateful for it it's really hard but try and be grateful from like trying like like you say absorb the darkness in a sense because you know that you do have to walk out the tunnel at the end of the day like there will be light there it doesn't stay bad for the rest of your life but you do have to be very conscious of that and actually make sure that you are moving forward if you just let it absorb you then great then accept your fate sort of thing I think when you're talking about bad times and dark times as well like I think it's um having the discipline with your thoughts as well to be able to adopt like obviously more positive thoughts over the negative because you can get caught up into being grateful for these negative thoughts but it's like how about I just exchange that I think of it like as if I'm trading my thoughts if I'm having these thoughts 
inside my head every single day how about I trade that for something better and who's telling me that this is so bad like I'm I'm creating this narrative for exactly that. yeah and this was like a prime example I was walking into work two days ago and one of the guys was saying oh I can't I can't run first thing in the morning time or I can't train before I go into the office and I said well like who's telling you that yeah. and he was like myself but I you know and I'm like well why don't you tell yourself something different you know yeah <laughs> I'm stuck in the lift with like strangers and they're looking at me you know and I just thought like uh, I don't know for me I think when people don't want to change and they they fall in love with te- with telling themselves this negative story they're they actually indulge in the shit and it's like stop indulging in the shit and actually start indulging in the change the positives and when you change that mindset of how good it makes me feel to indulge in these positive steps that I can take, these positive changes I can make and look at it and make it so enticing for yourself, then you're not going to even think about the negatives anymore. You'll stop, yeah. you'll start disrupting those thought processes that you have, the stories that you keep telling yourself. And I think it's a it's a real skill. It's a real skill. And it's not something that happens overnight, but the minute you do it once, and then tell yourself, oh, I did that once. Oh, let yeah. me try again. Let me try it three times. Let me try it four times. And then you identify. And then it becomes like a pattern then for yourself. And you just don't even think. You don't entertain these stories inside your head anymore. Exactly. That's sometimes why I like I really, you know, when you hear great stories of people that have gone through shit. And I'm like, they've like, but I mean like real tough things. Like you could talk about the Middle East right now and things like that. And they come out the other side and things like that. But they might have like really deep. They might have lost family members and things like that. But do you know what? Because they're always going to relate to be like. It's been harder before, so I'll be OK. Sort of thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's why I like hardness and going through that sort of stuff, like you say, is. It's vital because it teaches you like it'll be all right. <laughs> like it's it's just vital to kind of go through those phases do you know what i think life is too easy life nowadays oh, is so way easy. too easy. despite the war that's going on at the moment and everything else that's going on at the moment like i just think we are sitting in the easiest moments of life everything can be at the drop of a hat when we go to even go to the supermarket our food's cough for us it's already sat on the shelf and we're picking it up and we're purchasing it and we have the purchase power to buy something off the shelf like yeah. god forbid you go to the supermarket now or even go and get it you know people are don't even bring themselves to the supermarket anymore because they've taliba they have deliveries yeah. you know so it's like but because that is our new normality, it, we all simmer in this normality, oh. and it's actually very unnormal for us to even do. This. It's not an it's it's not by nature. We don't we don't do like it's not a natural thing. Um, as humans, we haven't really we we've just I think we take the ease for granted, and I oh, think sorry. that's why we're nearly too spoilt. We're too spoiled. And this is why we indulge in these like low days. And when you're like, actually someone across the world, like they haven't got the choice to buy this food off the, the, you know, off the shelf or to be able to have this warm coffee within our coffee cup. You know, it's just the simple things like that. I think it's um, really important for us to check ourselves. I think you said it, just grow some balls. Like literally like, that's kind of what it is. Like we live in a world now where we know that it's out there. Like you can earn money by this. Like you can go now and earn money sort of thing. Like if you have a skill and a service, find someone's problem and then fix that problem with your skill and service. Like it's not hard. Like, so when people moan like, Oh, just, it's almost just entitlement. People feel like they should wake up and have this delivered to them, have this. Fuck knows. I don't know where this entitlement's come from, from such a generation in a sense um and it makes me sometimes as well like I'm very excited to think about family in the future but it does make me worry about it as well because I think we were kind of we grew up in that sweet spot where like we didn't have technology and then we kind of grew up with it so we still have like we went outside played in the dirt and we had an imagination like and we actually saw our parents kind of work hard like my mom had three jobs and things like that like but now it's like my kids won't ever have that 
<laughs> like and it's just but they'll have they'll have other things though to really enhance their mentality and to be exactly. able to thrive off but it's it's how you position that in your ch- in your children's life I think for sure I if anything I still think it's an exciting time for children however they're going to be brought up in a different way that maybe they're not going to be as active or but they'll have the tools to enhance their life to get yeah. after the things they want because um just a little random story here but I, w- I was a judge on this young entrepreneurship here in Dubai with GEMS founder schools and they had 5,000 students audition and they were in between the ages of eight and 14 and they were pitching a business idea. And these kids had pitched an idea to me and they the microchip where they were, they like they literally were just, just these kids anyway, they were, at, they were incredible. I felt like, I felt like the dummy in the room sat in front of these kids judging yeah. them. I felt like Louis X Factor and I was like, these are fantastic. <laughs> but they, the they these are the guys that are going to be the brains of the future. They're super intelligent and they were so motivated as well. So I do think it de- really depends. I think if we don't, if we put boundaries in place, hmm. make kids feel like they need to earn things as well. Yeah. I think, uh, which I think the level of success now is climbing so high that I think if they don't get after things and if they don't make an active decision, they're going to be sat in in not a very nice place. And if they see the kids around them that are thriving, I I think I think it will just change. I think just the their ways will change. But I don't. I I like to think see the positives and everything, and I don't like to worry about things that haven't happened either. No. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. I'm definitely half glass full all the time. Even when things are tough, I'm like always trying to take, kind of take, sometimes take the hope in the situation and be like, there's, I think that's a lovely thing, having hope for the future and having hope for that generation and things like that. But like you say, it will be a very different. Like, I think if humanity is, this is such a going completely off, isn't it? But I think if humanity is as good and as strong and as intelligent as I'd like to think and as loving and all these things, I'd like to think that there will be a very bright future regardless of sometimes the negative, maybe the negative growth with it. Um, Like again, we're kind of, we're, we're getting so advanced in the last 50 years of what's capable of. And there's been loads of talk about AI and things like that. And, but if we can harness this knowledge to our advantage, can we start to live on a different planet, like in build a, such an amazing life there or whatever it is. Um, so hopefully there are certain people in the world and hopefully even just by conversations like this, it makes people aware and hopefully powerful leaders and things like that, whoever those leaders are that can keep humanity whole in a sense with this, growing evolution i i I think you know artificial intelligence is growing at a rate that we can't catch up essentially however the people the the hands that it's placed in are the hands of people who could be at the potential of doing great things but it could be they could have the potential to do really bad things as well and i think that's just by nature they'll always be bad and good yeah uh, however i do think artificial intelligence was always created to make us more efficient to enhance our lifestyle to enhance our well-being so if we take a look and slightly be naive to the fact that like our future could be run by robots and the world's gonna end yeah Uh, that i think we'll live a nice blissful life but i think our life is only just as as blissful as we make it out to be and how we think about it ourselves so we take ownership and responsibility in how we think on the future yeah um but it's a difficult one like i do think uh 
sometimes you need to just push your focus into the present because then you'll never be really worried about the future you know and I think that's what comes down to every time every time I feel worried or anything like this I'm just like just focus on what's going on now <laughs> yeah but and that's all you can do isn't it at the end of the day like yeah we can plan for the future and we can have these visions of what we want to achieve and stuff like that but we just generally don't know what's going to happen in the next hour let her know the next 24 hours so I think that's probably one of the biggest things that this year has taught me. It's just taught me to like, honestly, just be so, like, it sounds so silly, but like, just so grateful for the little things, the people in your life, and sometimes the environment that you're in, because it's always the easiest thing, our oh, grass is always greener and things like that. But the truth is, like, if you just take a step back and look at your life, is it really that bad? Like, chances are probably not, because most of us are all doing pretty well for ourselves if you I always think if you've got a mobile phone in your hands and you got a roof over your head and all the simple things I'm like you're doing all right bro like you'll be okay <laughs> so tell me this what have you learned this year because I know you've said you have had a year of learning so I think I've learned I've learned various different things that for different parts of my life Obviously, if that comes down to a physical and things like that, it's very different because I think I kind of you just do that sort of stuff every day. Um, so obviously, there's always been development there. I've learned. I think when hard things pop up and tough things pop up. I've do you know what? I could, probably I've learned how to. Oh, man, I don't even know. It's just so big. I've learned how to like truly love I think is one of the biggest ones like truly like and understanding what it feels like to feel real love that's been a really big one for me um and it's honestly the most amazing feeling on the planet as well like I never thought it would feel like that and a kind of just understanding all forms of relationships like it's been big like just understanding like needs and wants and all this sort of stuff and being able to I think being able to put my my feet in other people's shoes has been massive um and truly I just think like an inner strength and inner fire has come from all of that um just to do little things like we talked about here it's just like don't be oh I don't know if you're frozen or not no, you're good. <laughs> um, yeah, just to like go for it. The, no, no. Um, the the recording just went off a little bit, so I, I hope. Uh, no, but... it's okay. It should be all right. It's still recording. <laughs> um, no, I, do you know what? Some I I probably sit here and I'm a bit speechless of what I've learned this year. Um, but I'm I'm so happy with what I've learned. I think that's the biggest thing I felt for a long time. It's just being like, I always say it every year. I feel more fulfilled every year. I feel happier every year. <laughs> and I can probably sit here being like, probably the happiest I've been. Um, But for so many different reasons, not for myself, but almost just happy for everything else around me, not me. <laughs> it's a bizarre kind of concept. I think it's really important to have that uh, idea of being able to be happy for other people, for other things and be grateful for other things as well, though, because if you can't be, then the, that's a reflection of yourself. That's something that you're missing inside yourself. And you I often feel like, oh, if something hits me hard. If I feel a bit affected by someone I remember before now, not now, not now. I'm always happy. I'll clap for anyone who's who's succeeding in their business but I remember when I used to be um let's say when I was overweight and I was not happy with myself I lacked self-confidence um I would often look at other people who were thriving and I would feel like this kind of I didn't want to clap for them but it was it was because I couldn't clap for myself yeah. and it was like one of those th things so I often see when people 
don't feel happy it's like an insecurity within themselves so maybe all this work that you've done the insecurities that you've previously had you worked on that relationship with yourself that now you can finally see what's around you and be happy for what's around you yeah and it probably is isn't it 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 definitely is it's like it's little demons and little insecurities you don't even know you have until you're like oh yeah I don't know that was an issue before (laughs) sort of thing and you don't even know it and you don't even know it so no it's just been um I found this as well go I I found this as well with like when I I, so I gave up alcohol or for a year and three years ago and I yeah I've had one or two little episodes since but I found when I first gave up alcohol a lot of the time people would have this weird relationship with me or felt like they felt really uncomfortable with me or they would make a slot a, like a sly kind of comment that I gave up alcohol when that was actually I I realized very quickly it was a reflection of them and their habits and they didn't really like yeah the fact that I cha- I changed and they were still kind of doing the same things and realizing that afterwards that alcohol wasn't really kind of having a positive effect on them, but they were just doing it for the sake of doing it to fit in a lot of the time. I've had these kind of conversations with people who have given up alcohol and they've seen similarities and patterns in that. Now, I'm not saying everyone's like that and I don't judge anyone for drinking either. I think, look, each to their own. If someone's enjoying that and that's what they want to do, by all means, like, because I went through years of drinking and I had most amazing memories and amazing holidays and even now you know even an odd time if I want to have a celebratory drink with family friends whatever it is I, I'll never say never you know but uh, I think it's um anytime you feel a kind of something in the pit of your stomach when something's happening in front of you when you know you should be clapping I think that's a a message to yourself to look in a little bit deeper at why you feel that way yeah, hundred percent. I always think that gut feelings always the gut feelings always right at the end of the day. Yeah, and I think you know sometimes we don't listen to our gut enough as well because we have external factors that impact our our gut balance. You could say it could be food, could be alcohol, could be drugs, could be sex, could be social media that we're inflicting on ourselves when we're having a certain gut feeling and we're not listening to our gut. So I think sometimes. We need to remove that in order to get really in line with what our gut is telling us. Yeah, I think that's probably a being a big one. It's like removing the emotion and things like that from the equation and trying to look at it more rationally and things like that. And then applying that kind of response in not an emotional, not not in reacting, but just reply as an assessment in a sense so that you can approach everything in this, I think when you can kind of control your emotions and things like that, or you can listen to them, then react in them in a, a, a polite manner, in a sense, however you want to put it, then I definitely think that when you can control that, that's a very powerful thing. Because then you start to look at things and people very, very differently. Because if someone, if you turned around and just started having a go at me, I'd be like, oh, like, what have I done? Straight away, you take it personally. Instead of thinking like, whoa, like there's obviously something going on in your life where something's affecting you that you feel like you have to lash out to me because well, mm-hmm. I don't think I've done anything sort of thing. So it's just being actually taking that kind of emotion out of the equations and just looking at it very, very neutral and then kind of going from there. I think that's been a big, a big assessment. Definitely. I feel like I've become like a little um cricket in that sense because I feel like I've gone to a level where like even if someone's lashing out, even if someone's angry, I don't I I I sit there and I analyze and then like it's not even it's yeah <laughs> because it, if anything when you see this crazy emotion in front of you it's like oh what's it, what's making this happen you know <laughs> like because yeah. I maybe I escape that or I'm trying to think oh where did that come from um but I think this is this comes this really does come from someone who's been I've been super reactive in my past I would say nearly past life that I used to be so super reactive and responsive that I actually learned a lot with being silent when you when you're silent 
you and and not fill gaps when you can just sit there in silence when someone is being super emotional you're obviously being a pair of ears for them so you can listen you can understand you can collect the information that you need in order to be able to respond to someone or if someone's being angry allow them to have the silence to listen to themselves yeah yeah 100 percent. and also like you say when someone is reacting like that if you can if we are just going from anger for example if you can just sit there and just almost show nothing like you say like kind of just sit there and observe it allows them to kind of hear themselves, hopefully, if they're, and it allows them to hear themselves and things like that. And if, because people want a response, it's human nature, they want a reaction to come off it. So if they don't get that, they're like, straight away, this comes down to this level. So then they start to like, oh, and then you can have a civil conversation. It's like, you know, what grows a fire is oxygen. So it's like when two people are arguing, you know, you're just adding oxygen to the fire. So it's like, how about we just like, don't add anything to this. Let it just burn out. I let it burn out because no one, people get tired of their own voices over time. Oh. They speak and speak and speak and they want another input. So if you just say nothing, and I know it's not not having an opinion, because you can have your opinion, but you can sit back, collect the information and then respond. And I think that's uh, it's something that you will learn over bad experiences. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, because, do you know what? I've I've had this with strangers, even in the industry I'm in, even fina- in the financial industry. You can imagine how people are with their finances, how fiery you meet people, you know, CEOs of big companies now that it's like people when the money's on the table, you know, there there's a lot yeah. of emotions involved. Um, and just to even give you even a quick little story here, because I remember when I first started my job, I'd never dealt with such high levels of funds before. And I remember when you're talking about having emotion, emotion in situations and draining out the emotion. I remember I asked a guy, I said, how, how much funds are we talking about here in this meeting? You know, how much funds do you have allocated? And he said, uh, 50 million US dollars. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> I mean, do you think I was like, oh my God. And then I realized I need to drain the emotion, whether it's $5 yeah. or $50 million here, because I'm responding to the emotions that I have with this 50 million. But what way would I respond if I had $5? Yeah. I I would just respond like a normal human being. But because that felt like, I felt like a fish out of water. I was like, I'm not responding with the way that I would logically think. So now I've gone to that. I think the, the financial industry has taught me to drain emotion, to to collect information and respond accordingly like a normal human being like the normal Sophia that she would be yeah especially when it comes to finances right because it's such a touchy subject for anyone like I don't know like I don't really have an issue with money but if it's like oh how much do you earn everyone gets like well why does it matter and and all this sort of stuff so again like if someone says to be honest if someone said that number to me I'd think fuck <laughs> like holy shit <laughs> um be like make it 45 just give me five okay like <laughs> um you, but you just have to again even... like you can't you can't even fathom that though I think that's with the numbers like so you just you have that sat in a, a, an account <laughs> and you're like okay <laughs> hey breathe breathe <laughs> like yeah but it's true like it's such a money is always such a sensitive area for people so what i think that's a really strong skill like when especially when it comes to the financial world because i think if you can comfortably talk about money and big money and moving it very casually and very smart it's a big deal it's a bit like talking about sex it's being like well actually having that conversation with a partner about sex like what do you like what do you not like is this position okay like do you want this or what do you have any fetishes and things like that it's not really an awkward subject if you kind of say it confident and relaxed and it's the kind it's of like you have to often, learn that it's not even how often do you learn that right I think when you don't when you do something for the first time it's always it's always awkward you're always going to have a bit of friction right so how often do, do people ask you on a daily basis how much money do you earn it doesn't really happen that very often so if it feels foreign to people that they they feel oh there's friction here so it's like 
unless you invite that conversation in time and time again, then it's very hard to get comfortable with it. So if if anyone is listening, I would say having the if you feel uncomfortable around money, start having these conversations with yourself, with your own thoughts that you become so comfortable with it. And even if you have this money scarcity as well, imagine yourself having these big figures essentially and if you're thinking like this on a daily basis the numbers then become less uncomfortable for yourself and yeah. it's it's the same when when it comes to fitness as well changing your physique you know being comfortable with the ideal body that you would have wanted that you want it mm. like it doesn't make it doesn't make your goals seem so far away and I think we constantly need to have these little chats with ourselves or amongst our peers or our partners or our friends in order to feel like it's actually very comfortable. But like you said about sex, we don't like, unless you have a partner, how often do you want to talk about these things? Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. But no, it's so, not. What little things have you learned this year? Feel me. And I, I feel like we're recapping the end of the year. I know it's the only beginning of November, but I'm in like the end of the year recap phase, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so I've learned that I can be in the financial industry. <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> and, and, and make it work. Um, I've learned to listen. Um, I've learned, I've definitely learned that there's so, that there's four different types of people that I need to be very aware of when I'm approaching a conversation when it comes to money as well. Um, because not everyone needs, can be spoken to the same way. People yeah. need a different level of reassurance. People need a different level of information as well. Um, also, communication skills the communication skills even though I feel felt like I communicate before but um when we talk about like getting angry and um, being quiet I, I learned the hard way with one client it was like a couple of weeks into my job and I found myself arguing with someone of which <laughs> I, I'm not an argumentative person no, I can't imagine you doing I, that yeah and and it was the frustration of someone not listening to me yeah when I when they came to me for advice and they would not listen it was like they were trying to ram their opinion down my neck so because they were I, I was co coming to the same level of, as them and I felt like I was being pushed out of character and it was it was one of those bizarre experiences that I was like oh afterwards I, I came back feeling like oh that didn't sit well with me so it's it's been a funny experience because I never would have had that with personal training or fitness because I'd always feel like I knew how to speak to someone but it was because I was in that industry for so long so yeah <laughs> um it's all life is all a learning curve and you're gonna with even with my job now I feel like I learn every single day I learn I, I I've now I feel like I'm at a level where I just think if you just be a good person you show you show love respect to people and that everyone's a human being at the end of the day then you kind of can't do any wrong like you can't yeah. do any wrong and I feel like uh the times when I ever felt like I was pushed out of character was because I wasn't living in line with who I was at that certain period of time um and patience patience <laughs> I've patience never learned patience home. I've never learned patience like I have today. Like I've never learned patience. And I think that's where I'm so patient that I'd nearly fall over because like, I'm like <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, amazing. Honestly, like, no, obviously it's always nice as well. Like, it's just obviously, it's nice to see you grow. And it is, I think, do you know what? Like you say, it's been when you're happy in yourself, like you can be super happy. And like you say, you can clap for someone else. And I generally always feel like that, especially for you. I do for you. I think it's because we've kind of, we've been in, I don't know, like, you know, when you're kind of involved with someone, you kind of follow their life and you're part of their life, but you're yeah. kind of not sort of things, but you get to witness it. I think that's just a nice thing. So like seeing you grow with your career and even like we said, what we said off, off off the camera and stuff like that it's nice that I'm like yeah fucking good on you do you know what I mean it's it's so nice that you're in that position and you're growing in all forms of your life so no it's lovely to see so I'm I'm really happy for you so it's cool thank you, thank you so much and likewise honestly I think uh 
I think that's the real precious thing about Dubai as well, because I think people feel like they're here for maybe like a transitional mm. part of their life or for such a short period of time. So they want to make the best out of it. And I think when you if that's your idea of your Dubai experience as well, the likelihood of you surrounding yourself with these types of people is very, very relatively high. So it's super exciting to watch people thrive. And it's also very exciting to see. I know this is going to sound terrible to see people fail, but to how they recover from their failure, the, fa the failures that they've had. And I feel like I've rubbed shoulders with lots of failures, like, yeah. and watching them push through persevere has been really, really exciting. And me included, I've failed so many times that I would say this year I've failed I I if I could get a spreadsheet that probably is <laughs> the length of my body now at this stage yeah where I can look at the failures but I can look at the failures and I can actually giggle inside because I'm like this has been brilliant this has been brilliant that I haven't tried I, I at one stage I remember I actually remember this like it was broad daylight as well just curling over my bed being like what the fuck have I done <laughs> yeah what but have I done like and, and there's no one here to fucking pick me up here like there's no one here you know as in you don't have your family you don't have your friends that you grew up with you know you yeah. don't have those securities that you really really need in those in those times and it's just like and then you're like look it's one day today yeah. is just maybe one day and that is it like tomorrow tomorrow is the one day closer that you could be from the the light that you see that I mean, like you're and often I think you know Toby you good mutual friend Toby we say there's a kink in the hose there's a kink in the hose <laughs> I keep saying yeah there's a kink in the hose but like you know the kink is about to unwind so yeah that's what I keep looking each day as a bit like some days you're gonna have a kink in the hose <laughs> yeah no 100 percent and I feel like sometimes you always need one you always need a little one <laughs> like as long as there's a little bit and the water's dripping through, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know what? It helps you to really dial into what you're doing, fine tune what you're doing, and then just kind of be consistent with where you, you need to go. Because I definitely, there's one time where I remember being sat in train beach club, sat in the swimming pool, having my business running at an incredible speed without me even doing anything. And I was not growing at that stage. And I thought, oh, let me sit back and relax. And I did. I sat back and relaxed until my business went to shit. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, you forget during these great times, sometimes you forget all those little baby steps that you did got you to where you need to be. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. Just keep going. Keep doing the things that got you to that stage. Because yeah. if you stop when, when there's a, sh a sunny day and you stop for too long, Everything is going to come crumbling down around you. And that's my best piece of advice I can give to anyone who's even doing online coaching to just keep doing the little things, even when the good times are rolling in, because you never know when there's going to be a rainy day. Amazing. No, I love it. I was going to say, as it's the 1% podcast, of course, you have to give one piece of advice, but I think you've already done it. <laughs> so it's cool. I've done that. <laughs> she stole it. I don't have to ask it. It's great. It's perfect. <laughs> But no, honestly, my love, like, it's just, it's always amazing to catch up with you and things like that. And I know we can just ramble on about everything. And it's good just to have these, I don't know, we haven't really spoke about anything. We spoke about, well, we spoke about everything and everything <laughs> and nothing. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like one of those conversations that I hope someone takes a nugget away from our our catch up, you could say. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the I, I thing is like, when I speak to like everyone that I speak to has always had something for value. Like again, you listen to a podcast for an hour, whatever it is, 45 minutes and people don't need to take value in the whole thing. It's like you say, it's just the little things every day. Like they might've just took one thing that you said and they're like, that's it. That's what I needed to hear today. And that's kind of what, especially in the world that we're in, it's so fast paced and things like that. But if someone can say, Hey, just, Oh my God. Sophia said, just be present. And you're like, Oh fuck. She said it at the right time. She said it in the right tone of voice. And she said it just at this second when I need to hear it. Like, that's all that matters. So it's a perfect conversation. <laughs> Thank you for having me. No, it's good. No, awesome, my love. I will, um, actually, where do people still 
message you and things like that instagram and stuff like that yeah on on instagram sophia delavari and then obviously i have my own podcast which doesn't compete with yours <laughs> no good go for it and then do you have, I have i was gonna say do you have like um a business thing for like work as well a business page or anything so, like that yeah so you can catch me on sophia delavari on instagram and i have the dubai investment girl in the bio as well as my podcast okay. called the Detached podcast so uh yeah basically that's where all the handles are feel free to reach out I'm always happy to help when I can because my inbox gets very spammy full of lots of weirdos and lots of amazing messages though as well at the same time so uh yeah um I'm always happy to answer people no amazing I'll put all your descriptions and stuff like that at the descriptions I'll put all your info in the descriptions um but yeah anyone that wants to reach out to Sophia she is absolutely amazing and I know obviously now she'll give you some decent financial advice as well so I might have to start reaching out as well <laughs> so it's all good <laughs> but no but no thank you so much for your time my love I really appreciate it thank you